I am going to show you guys how we can use the simple quadratic equation to find out the explicit formula for the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence. So have a look right here. Let's consider the quadratic equation and that's the one mm, we have x squared and then minus x minus 2 minus 1 minus 3 ah minus 1 uh, it's equal to 0 hold on let me think yeah I think this is correct we know this right here is simple but golden because one of the solutions right here is the golden ratio but for now let me just do the following I'm just gonna say let phi you guys know that's the symbol for the golden ratio. And we also have another solution, but let's again just look at this. I will just say B the solution to this quadratic equation. And because we said that this is the solution for this equation, so we are allowed to just put this back here. And we will just end up with V square. And of course, it will be minus V minus 1 is equal to 0. But let's put these two terms to the other side. So we get V square equals v plus 1. Okay, pretty good. What we want to do next is we will look at this equation and then multiply everybody by v. That way we can get v to the third power and then v squared plus v. So far so good. But hey, does this look familiar? Yes, because v squared is just v plus 1. So we can just go ahead and put that down, which is v plus 1. And of course, we just have to add that v right there. And altogether, we can say this is just 2v plus 1. Okay, so far so good. I like that. And then let's do the same thing. I'm just going to look at this equation here and multiply both sides by v. So that way we can get v to the fourth power. And then we will get v to the third power plus square. Guess what? Let's do the same thing. Because we know v to the third power, which is just equal to that, so I can just go ahead and say we will have 2v plus 1, and then we just have to add v square, and I think we know v square is, huh? This right here is just that, which is just v plus 1. And uh, can we just go ahead and add them up? Yeah, of course. 3v plus 2. Good. But did you guys notice what we just did? v to the third power plus v square, which is this plus that. Okay, keep that in mind. Let's do it again. Guess what? All in all, we get 5v plus 3. Good. All right, let's do it one more time. V to the sixth power. But this time, I'm not going to write down the work. Let's just look at the pattern, if we can figure this out. Do you guys see the pattern? Yes. Look, one, and technically, we can also backtrack here. It's one, one, two, three, five. So what's the next one? Eight. Yes. They are the Fibonacci sequence. The coefficient of V formed the coefficient the coefficient of V formed the Fibonacci sequence. Yes. Yeah. And this right here should make sense. And of course it's valid because the truth is for V6, we're just adding the previous two expression, and that's exactly how we get the Fibonacci sequence. Because for the next number, we add the previous two numbers, right? So in fact, for the next one, we just add this and that together, which is 5. And of course, if you want to show all the work, v to the 6th power. Same thing, told you. So of course, this right here will keep on going. But now, check this out. On the left-hand side, we are talking about v to a power n. So let's just go ahead and write that down. So notice we have v to the nth power. This right here will be equal to what? Well, the coefficient of v right here is the Fibonacci sequence, and that matches with the n, right? Because if you have, let's say, 6, this is actually the 6th uh, Fibonacci sequence. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this right here, it will be fn. And then we multiply by v, which is the golden ratio. And then we add, how about the constant terms? Where do they come from? 
The truth is, they are also the Fibonacci sequence. But the thing is that they are just the previous term, right? The 5 is just the previous term, right? The 5 is in front of the 8. Hmm? So for the constant terms, it's just f n minus 1, the previous term of the Fibonacci sequence. Cool. Now, let's come back here again. Earlier we said let V be the solution, and technically we should say V1 because we have two solutions. And uh, the other solution, I'm just going to call that to be V2. So, earlier we were just dealing with V1 technically, so let me just put on V1 and V1 here. And because V2 is a solution as well, so the same thing will happen. Aha! Now we have this kind of system of equation to work with, and our goal is to find out what Fn is. Check this out. We have Fn minus 1, we also have Fn minus 1. Let's just go ahead and subtract these two equations. I'm just going to do the first one minus the second one, and then we will end up with, on the left hand side, we have V1 to the n minus V2 to the n, and then on the right hand side, okay, both of them have Fn, so we can factor that out. So I will just put down Fn, and then I will just have V1 minus V2. And then, of course, this minus that, they cancel out nicely. Cool. So now let's actually figure out what V1 and V2s are. And of course, we just have to solve this quadratic equation. And let's say V1 is the golden ratio, which is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. And then for V2, well, this is just 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. And right here, we will have to get V1 minus V2. This minus that, they have the same denominator already, so we just do 1 minus 1, which is 0. Square root of 5 minus a negative square root of 5 is 2 square root of 5, but we have a 2 on the bottom. So all in all, this minus that is just a square root of 5. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to get this by itself, we just have to divide the square root of 5 on both sides. So, Fn, this right here, is just going to be 1 over square root of 5 times v1 to the nth power, which is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, and then to the nth power, and then minus v2, which is that, 1 minus square root of 5 over 2, and then to the nth power. Ta -da! This right here is indeed the explicit formula for the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence. It's super, super cool, because usually I will show you guys how to solve the formula by using the difference equation, but that's a little bit technical, because you might have to take a discrete map in order to encounter that situation. But for this, we saw the pattern earlier, and then we're able to come with this, and then it works out so, so, so nicely. And if you guys like math, I'm pretty sure you guys will also like today's sponsor, Brilliant. As a calculus teacher, I'm always looking for new resources to help students learn better, and at Brilliant, they provide exactly just that. The best thing is that they focus on interactive learning, and all of their courses in math, science, and computer science are all based on that fundamental. One thing I really enjoy is that they provide interactive lessons so that you can easily see how the functions changed when the number is adjusted. I really like them because they also believe that the best way to learn is by actually doing it rather than just memorizing facts for exams. You can just go ahead and pick a course that you like and get started. So go ahead and check them out. Use the link in the description, brilliant.org slash blackpenrepen, because this way you can get a 20% off discount. I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and I want to thank you for checking them out.